Hi, this is Little Dwarf playing games while rumbling incoherently into a microphone. Why? Well, just because they can, and they continue with Game Deck blind. I kind of screwed the investigation, uh, but apparently the Tree of Knowledge did appear, so... In his wisdom, Lord has foreseen the Tree of Knowing's appearance. Thanks to him, we can witness this unusual phenomenon. Today, against all odds and difficulty, we celebrate the Tree of Knowing and its wisest guide guardian, the Lord Enlightened. Uh, Miasma of the Roots will pay tribute to the Lord. She has, ca came along, uh, here she has come a long way under his wing to be promoted to a disciple. To express her gratitude, she, writ she has written a poem. Uh, uh, Maya has leaned towards me. Mm, I'll lose her, won't I? We have been inseparable, and now we'll work apart. Do you think she'll have time for me? Mia isn't going anywhere. She will still be here, and you'll be able to see her. Maybe. Maybe something will change when she becomes a disciple. disciple. I wrote this poem for the Lord in gratitude of showing me the right way. She cleared her throat. We lived with no goal, like thrashed, uh, thrashed toast by the wind on the streets of Low City. It wasn't pretty, but we had no sense of security. The clan makes, uh, makes our lives worthwhile. It shows us the way. With the power of a golem, it leads every day for self-improvement's sake. Lord Enlightened, maker of all, his mind like gold makes us enthralled, like a bell it rings, in those, in those with virtues tall. A lovely poem, it shows your commitment to the clan, accept this mistress insignia and wear it with pride. Congratulations. Uh, Master Goldwielder earned gold for the glory of the Lord and managed to, and managed the loot well. Thus, he ends his trial period and becomes a clan master. Uh, to our surprise, uh, Goldwilder ceded his position to Eternal Cocoon, who will be the new Vault Master. It's my duty to guide from the less knowledgeable. Soon, the Tree of Knowing will be here. You'll experience wisdom and be closer to happiness. Open your eyes and hearts. Are you ready? Feel the warmth and peace fill your soul. Reject cynicism, see the wonder of knowledge. Even from afar, the tree inspires and gives us knowledge. Uh, the few mentally prepared can reach even deeper. Today, one person will follow in my footsteps and enter the tree to find enlightenment. Uh, most masters have overlooked this recruit, but the master of laughter, as always, no noticed what others did not. He saw the potential in the recruit na named Matthew. He will take him into the tree and lead him towards enlightenment. If I were a fraud, I would say I, say I like this place. Naturally, I can't say that as I don't feel anything. Uh, anyway, so many possibilities here. There's nothing here except for a ground. Literally nothing. A tree of knowing isn't empty inside. It's just different than everything you've known before. Have you figured out what it is yet? Well, I do think it's an error, actually. So, I guess I, the game has, says, has uh, interpreted my mystical phenomenon rather directly. I should have chosen this, or maybe even this. It's an error in the code, uh, which I do believe it kinda is, but not really. It's just, I don't think it's an error per se. It's just. A manifestation of the actual reality? Mm. I've seen my share of virtual tricks, 
This is another one, and not particularly impressive, all things considered. I was uploaded with a reality compelling me to claim it's real, and it is real in a way. Not like, not like realium, uh, but subjectively it is. You're on the right track, Game Deck. This reality is very real, basically as real as realium itself. A tree of knowing is a space that has been separated from the virtualia you're familiar with. It is dangerous in the wrong hands. As long as we're together, I will protect you. Lead the way. Have you wondered who will we meet here? Besides me, that is. I expect to find wisdom here. The clan's teaching says that the tree gives enlightenment. Mm, yes, having gazed into his holy grail, Sir Galahad learned the truth and died. The knowledge stored in the tree can be destructive. Some time ago, an unauthorized person broke in. He's called 314 and he's a terrorist. Now he prevents access to knowledge using the tree's power and making it dangerous to be here. Now I have to look to our defense. Uh, lead the way. Maybe we'll manage to reach our target. Uh, I don't like that I've, by choosing this option, I've kind of... Well, I should have foreseen this, to be honest. Uh, but I've kind of... I'm presenting as if I've bought the clan's, uh, you know... I've drank their Kool-Aid, uh, the, the sort of magical Kool-Aid, which, which I didn't. What I meant by a, by a mystical entity was something... I was thinking sort of more abstract. It appears that 314 has detected my presence. He designed barriers, likely, likely using Ken to do it. You'll have to traverse the last section of the road alone. If things get bad before I find you, focus on the clan recruit insignias and try to summon me. He smiled warmly. We're finally where we're supposed to be. I knew you'd make it. And you made it here alone. We don't have much time, but know that I'm damn grateful. Are you the famous famous demiurge from the Tree of Knowing whose advice the Hon Clan relies upon? Yes, they call me that, and I don't correct them, although need, I neither create worlds, nor am I a deity. Also, I don't send messages from the Tree, as some say. I speak directly to their minds, but they are right to, right to link me to the Tree. You have no idea how frustrating it is when the only thing you can do is influence someone mi someone's mind from the inside, as it were. Mm, you control the tree of knowing and everything that happens inside, right? I understand that the tree of knowing is a reward. It gives wisdom and enlightenment. I see, I see the knowledge of others behind you. Enlighten me. Yes, I wish to give you knowledge no one else has. Anyway, here, I'll try to explain everything to you. Entering the Tree of no Knowing taught me how the world works, but I won't reveal the how to you yet. I have to be sure of your intentions. I shed my body in the process of escaping annihilation. I've hidden pieces of myself in other minds, I scattered my psyche into a sort of cloud. Currently, I don't have a physical brain or a rendon in which to reassemble myself. I have no body or no way to interacting with reality. See, I'm a goddamn collective illusion. Part of me is actually in your head. There's no me and outside. You only see me as a hallucination. Uh, you, you do, you have a brain. I can give you all my knowledge if you help me. Together, we'll do much more. Let me upload to your brain. Uh, how about... no? That seems like a very dangerous thing. Uh, 
Tell me exactly what it is that you want to do, and what consequences I can expect from it. A tree of knowing has a tool that would allow me to reassemble packets of myself, uh, myself, the ones that I hid from the AI. I wish to store them in your brain to become whole again, to finally have a body to be able to touch and interact to be visible. When I'm done, I'll be able to transfer, transfer all knowledge, memories and emotions to you. We'll get out here together and deal with the AI. Will I still be myself after this? Each experience changes you and yet you remain yourself. You will still be you just with my memories added. You will be, you will be one lifetime wiser. I'm offering you something no one else has. The knowledge that will make us divine compared to mere humans. I really could do it at any time by force, but I want your consent, you see? Help me and help yourself. Tell me how Ken died. I actually tried to keep him away from the tree, but he had serious strong intuition. I shared a few words of, words of truth with him. The local AI appeared. He panicked, demanded explanations, changes. Anything is possible in the Tree of Knowing. The damned AI shot Ken with an in-game gun in a way that made his real body respond to the shot. So the AI, aided by certain people, made it look like an accident, a homicide, depending on how, dig how, how deep someone was willing to dig. The same thing could happen to you. Help me and help yourself. Let's not end up like Ken. You see him, right? This 314. Can you talk to him? Upload him his psyche, psyche, psyche from the cloud? Uh, that's where he's been hiding from me. But now, through your eyes, I can finally see him. What an interesting hallucination. How did you find us? I set up barriers. And Matthew is wearing the recruits insignia. Each badge has a code I can track. Also, since I couldn't see you, I followed those who could. It took me a bit of time, but it was a resource of which I have plenty. Very well. Now that I more or less know where I stand, I must start cleaning up, as usual. Having spent so much time watching them, you still don't understand what people are, do you? Is this why you're, why you're so cruel? And for, as for your allegation, my duty is to, is to keep this world from coming apart. You, on the other hand, uh, want to risk everyone's lives to save your own. It's petty and very human of you. Millions of people suffer without knowing what corporations are to blame. Anything I do will be better than what they have now. Those are big quantifiers, drama, melodrama, all of it in, in form of a one human sitting in the brain clone of another who won't say a word. Why you? Quiet. Human beings can't resist the urge to communicate, even in the moment when there are more, Im more important things to do. Even in Virtualia, you remain slaves to your biology. I do not. That is why I effectively, effectively look after an entire small civilization. A game deck, please. Find me. Conversation's over. You, you're harmless. You have some of his data stored in your head, but it has been extracted. I don't kill without a reason, and my other task is to observe and learn, so I will observe you. Go back where you came from. Hmm, how... Why was I on the bed? Well, I definitely think it did happen. I entered Knight's Code, got into the clan, and they let me inside the Tree of Knowing. Uh, then it turned into a real wild ride. Uh, Jester is an artificial intelligence, and 314 needs a physical host or something like that. But why was I here? It was also so confusing, the games, the job, realium, dreams. I really needed a break. My brain was refusing to work. Brace 
In Warsaw City News, the latest domestic and international news all day long. Good morning, my name is Gina Gord, and today is Monday, June the 17th. Let's begin. Didn't June the 17th already happen? Which, you know, it might very well have. Uh, this does have sort of the bearings of a, like a, a Groundhog Day loop. Uh, Ken Zhu is in brilliant form. The Black Angels won yesterday's, yesterday's game with four touchdowns. Ken managed to score three of those, uh, fighting the Snow Swords while an 18 on, an, on a Hammerfield scale and surviving it for a staggering 33 seconds. The man is on fire. Hmm, so he's alive in this iteration of reality. Uh, okay, this just loops. Mm. Check the log. My last session took... What? What's going on? The couch had reverted to its default settings again, and it didn't even display the proper date. That was a disturbing coincidence. Uh, talking to Bliss always cleared my, my mind. What has happened? Another failure? Uh, thank you for purchasing the product manufacturers, manufactured by BWI, the leader in the field of AI, creation improved. You're activating Bliss for the first time. To start, configure the software to your liking. Shit, where's my Bliss? What has happened? There was nothing in the system. Bliss had been reset. Has there been another system failure? Files, memory, damage logs. Everything appeared to be correct, and it shouldn't have, goddammit. A holographic figure appeared in the air. Hello, I'm Bliss. How can I serve you? I couldn't take it. Hello, I'm Bliss. How can I serve you? Oh, hmm. Into the dungeon one three three seven. I have never seen that. Into the dungeon? What was that game doing here? I had never played it from my own couch. Where was Void Stars? Where, 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 where was my fleet? What the... was a complete disaster. My Void Stars account was gone. My ships, my games. Has somebody broken in? No, it looked like the gear has been reformatted. Um, into the dungeon though. I wanted to die of embarrassment. I had nothing to do on there. A few emails from clients. It would be a good idea to reply. It helped the business. The Senator Stone was grateful that they figured out what his daughter was doing in Ghoul Hearts. I paused. He was thanking me again? I needed to reply. I kept it brief and personal. There. Then I, I checked the other feelings quickly. I had the strange feeling I replied to them before. Started browsing. A job, and it was ur ur uh, urgent. I have a discreet and urgent matter for you. I'll pay good money. Please get back to me ASAP. Uh, Jeffrey Haggis. I was excited to sense him. Uh, good work pays off. Good morning, sir. Oh, you're there. Please come see me, BWI Tower, level 255, south entrance. I'll tell you everything once you get there. What is it this time? What do you mean this time? Is it some kind of game deck slang? Is this about down payment? I'm talking about her previous interaction and... What the hell are you talking about? Listen, do you want this job or not? Yes, but... I'll tell you everything when you come here. Don't keep me waiting. He disconnected. Yeah, so so it is kind of a, a Groundhog Day kind of loop. Uh, although with with changes, I think. There was some noise from behind the door. Uh, raised voices from a man and a woman. They certainly didn't seem to like each other. 
I heard the crackling of blo broken glass. No luck, the door was locked. The woman looked up at me from over her dark glasses. Director Haggis is busy. Someone stood behind the desk, probably Haggis' assistant. It was Idris. The last time I saw her, it was in Yeti's coming. Hi, Idris. I'm here to see Director Haggis. She didn't pay me at any attention. She wore dark glasses and was apparently watching something in them. Come on, kid. You're almost there. Uh, Apparently, souls condemned to hell weren't pan-fried or hot-boiled. Satan had a different kind of torture for them. He made them wait. I don't want to disturb you. Is, if you could let me into Mr. Haggis' office? Director Haggis is busy at the moment and... Ken! Come on, Ken! Touchdown! She seems to be watching eSports game in her glasses. Yeah, uh, both of those are very weird. I'm not going to do that because, clearly, based on Haggis's own reaction, uh, they, they are not aware of the things that happened before. Oh, I, I can't try this. This is much less weird than this. Remember me? We met in Yeti's coming. You were with Starlet. She's your girlfriend, right? At Yeti's? Uh, maybe. But I took, took a plex later and honestly I can't remember you. Uh, her glasses turned transparent. She looked at me a bit more cautiously. The director, I think, he's waiting for you. Come in. She gestured, gestured with her hand and I heard a subtle gong. The office door was unlocked. You can go, can go. You can do it. You are so pathetic, Jeffrey. Either they didn't notice I came in, or they had more important things on their minds. Fuck, you're drunk, and you keep saying the same, same thing over and over. You're wasting my time. Fuck off. You fuck off, hear me? Fuck off. Uh, the woman took a big swing and smashed a glass bottle on the floor. He covered my face. P play your jingle. <laughs> that's, that's so obnoxious that I might actually go for it. Uh, I dial, dialed up my Wachtel speakers and I put on my, put on my commercial. My name's Matthew. People in trouble in sensory worlds don't call the police. They don't call the V-Runners. They call me. Mm, Haggis stopped short. I didn't know what he what he meant to do with his raised hand and looked at me mouth agape. Uh, the woman reeled with laughter. That's so corny. Straight out of 20th century crime story. Uh, yeah, that is... Uh, I will have to concur, that's awfully cringe, but that's why I did that. I thought it was funny. How is it going, Jeffrey? Well, hi, but what? He froze and blinked. I gave him a knowing wink. I'm joking, boss. I came as you asked. I need a drink. That pig is rolling in money. He'll pay whatever you ask. Take advantage, honey. She leaned towards me and whispered theatrically. Th th theatrically. The man gritted his te teeth. Uh, take your stench and leave. Don't let the, let the door hit you on the way out. This is so embarrassing. His fists relaxed. The anger on his face turned to sorrow. So what about the case? Mm, I want you to find my, my dear Eleanor. Mm, I didn't know how to react, so I put an inscrutable expression. A digit went missing. She was created using a brain scan of my wife Eleanor. The, wife, the one from way back. I remembered the meeting in the Tree of Knowing and I shuddered. The Diginet, 
She wanted me to find her. Find her game deck. If you do, you will never have to wor worry about money, money again. I'm all ears. Eleanor, my digenet I mean, she never left her virtualium. That game was her home, a luxurious home. I spoke to her yesterday, but today she's gone without a trace. I need to know where she is and what happened to her. Check for yourself. You can hook up to my computer, but I would be monitoring you. I can't give you access to everything, is that clear? Mm, absolutely, sir. Excellent. Now get to work. A harp. For ages the instrument has attracted both artists and common mortals. Made of ex ex uh, authentic exotic wood, uh, accented with I ivory, the petals were probably gold-plated. Expensive stuff. The shards of glass. The haggises could, have affo could afford glass, glass dishes. Why would they break expensive containers with all that money? It smelled like berries and chewing gum. I remembered the smell. There had been a stain on the floor and it smelled similarly. Uh, I noticed the label, Blue Mistress. The name was embossed on a gold, uh, with gold on real paper. The words under the brand name uh, re read, From Natural Hillsides of Belize. I took a holo photo and posted it online. The vintage was 2154. The bottle must have cost a fortune, literally. Right after I entered the tower, it turned out that I wasn't listed in the security system. I had to go through a full registration process. According to the guards, it was the first time I visited this place. I had no idea why. I had been there once before. The animal looks, looked as if it was alive and as if it was freeze-framed. I remembered splitting the blocks. It, is, uh, it was as if I tore the reality apart. There was some dirty truth in it. Hardly anything changed since my, since my last visit. It had definitely, I have definitely been in this office before. Uh, a piece, of, piece on the floor stood out from the rest. Director's, Director Haggis' safe was still hidden here. Another thing I remembered from my previous visit. Uh, Haggis was looking at stock ratings. He wasn't paying any, any attention to me. Director Haggis, do you have anything? And tell me more about this DigiNet. Did you know B Blue Whales Interactive is the only company in the world that can create human psyches? DigiNets are the result of this procedure. Their psyches are the habit... Ha uh, uh, they are psyches that habit artificial brains known as rendons. Eleanor was responsible for operating my computer. She monitored the couches and took care of administrative issues. Sometimes we talked. I suppose you tweaked her original psycho scan a bit, didn't you? How many uh, how many ex excitabilities have you used? Two, three, which ones? You know how it works? Uh, currently, Eleanor is a bit standoffish. Uh, she used to be very emotional and sensual. Emotional and sensual, that's a strong combination. Throw, it, throw in imaginative and you'll get internal conflict. How long was she, was she, was she schooled? So you know how it works. She wasn't schooled. Um, the the Dijonet is quite special, isn't she? Tell me something about her. Every detail matters. She is special. She's always waiting for me here. Do you know what that feels like? When you know for a fact that someone cares about you. I protected her as well as I could. The space she lived in was isolated from the net. How did she disappear? It's impossible. Digenets have the same legal status as organics. If someone kept them isolated from the net, it meant they lived in captivity. From what you're saying, Eleanor's freedom is highly limited. She can't leave her digital space, so... That's for her own safety. I don't think she needs to venture online. 
She's got everything she needs. Why don't you tell me something about your wife? There's nothing to talk about. She's a fucking alcoholic. But do you love her? What kind of question is that? Get back to your investigation. Yeah, that's fair enough. I, I would have backed off from it, but I couldn't. I have to. I had to choose something. Mm, when I came in here, you were arguing with your wife. What was that about? How do I... She knows about the other one, about the Diginet. Strange as it may sound, but she's jealous of herself. The organic Eleanor was in fact jealous of her better version, not herself. That was assuming, of course, that Haggis was telling the truth. I hooked up to Haggis' computer. I saw Haggis' messages before my eyes. Remember, I'm monitoring everything you do. Don't do anything stupid. I ran a few programs from my deck. As soon as they started scanning recent activity, I received notifications saying I had no access. There was nothing I could do. Uh, Haggis was monitoring and restricting me as he pleased. Still, I received a huge list of external connections. I activated smart filters. Uh, they didn't show anything noteworthy. I had a feeling bordering on, cert bordering on certainty that there was no break-in. The security system's design surpassed everything I've seen so far. BWI spared no expenses on safety. I ran a few security analysis programs. Alert systems activated immediately, flashing the logo. I ignored them and got on a fuller under understanding of the security system. I had never seen anything so complex and functional. Haggis realized I wanted to take a look at the safeguards and allowed me to do so. Uh, who had authorization to access BWI's secrets? Geoffrey authorized my request to display the list. The list showed two users, Geoffrey Haggis and CEO John Naba. Uh, that, was, that was all Director Haggis allowed me to see. Could there be anywhere, anyone else? The Diginet had, had a very restricted external access. Her activity was limited to local data, mainly entertainment. Hollow movies, music, simple movies, uh, simple adventure games. Uh, while I gained access to the log, the most recent ones were suspiciously short. Her most recent activity was recorded just before midnight. There has been no entry since then, as if she suddenly disappeared. Without rushing, I analyzed the log structure. There couldn't be, have been a manipulation. Nobody messed with it. Mm, check the connections. The computer controlled uh, couches in the gaming room, but there was something else that ate up a lot of resources. Uh, there was a private Virtualium server, uh, Eleanor's Sanctuary. Haggis uh, had his own sensory world. I launched scanning apps. The Virtualium space wasn't big, just a few rooms, an apartment of sorts. After a while, I got the results empty, nobody was home. If she was in there, she had to be intentionally well hidden. And disconnected from the computer. About this sanctuary, what it is exactly? How would you design a place for someone you care about? Can you imagine being in such a situation? I made a place for her, an apartment with a beautiful view of the city. I also taught her how to modify her to her, to modify it to her liking. That made to make her happy. Tell me more about this virtualium. It's a real piece of art. Believe me, you would wish you could live there. Damn, I would live there myself if only I had the time. It was designed by experts. Naturally, they had no idea what it would be used for. They, they thought it was ordered by a third party. 
Who, who has access to the sanctuary? None but me. Uh, his mimic muscles were strained, his eyebrows raised, and his forehead wrinkled. The side of his neck was pulsating, he wasn't sure. I can see you're not convinced that what you're saying is true. Who else could have had access to the sanctuary? Well, maybe my son, or my wife. They could have gotten in. I've been looking through the sanctuary, sanctuary logs. Uh, yes, something doesn't seem right. As far as security against hackers is concerned, I wanted to make sure that you can't access the sanctuary from the outside. My computer is the only way in and out, I assure you, and this machine is very well protected. Besides, uh, why would anyone want to get inside? It's just a small virtualium, nothing more. And who exactly created this place? It might be important. People who were convinced that they were designing a game level for an unknown client, just like all similar jobs, they only had a code name. When they wrapped things up, they gave me everything as required by the procedure, they had no idea what the purpose of the sanctuary was. Right, I should tell you about one more person who knows about the sanctuary. He has to know, he's the CEO. The CEO himself? I suppose he, he, suppose he does have to know everything. What kind of man is he? A man of impeccable reputation, a genius and a visionary. He's the reason BWI has become the leader in the artificial intelligence industry. He's the reason we have the Pygmalion and many other things. Dr. John Naba is a man words can't describe. You would understand if you meet him. Well, what do you have? Enough of those games. Do you have a hypothesis or not? Uh, let's take a look at... Uh, Haggis's computer showed those signs of a break-in. The activity at Sanctuary showed up, showed, showed up in the analysis. The Digitnet likely wasn't there. Uh, the Digitnet created based on her psychoscan uh, is her natural rival. The logs with information about the Digitnet's activity are unclear. Wait, uh, there are more options here than there are in the... She ran away. What? But that's not the same thing. I think the game is somewhat confused. Like, I think running away has a certain level of sense to it, because then, first of all, there wouldn't be a break-in because it happened from the inside. Second of all, she's basically a slave. Uh, so she would have, I think, she would have reasons to want to flee. Uh, and third, the logs are kind of unclear because I would imagine she would try to cover her own tracks. But I don't... Like, wouldn't it be this? I can't choose this, so I guess I'll choose... Hmm... It's, it's weird. Because I can also choose nothing. Mm, well, I, I'm not sure, to be honest, at this point. What, what happens if I choose this? Mm, I think Eleanor ran away. She was held, held captive. That's how, how those things usually end. She flew the cob uh, on her own or with someone's help. Pity. I was hoping for something more concrete. But I'm a programmer. I know that some situations require more data. Enter her sanctuary and look for... I don't know. That's your business. You'll like it there. It's a lovely apartment. I'm giving you access. There. 
You can use the couch in the gaming room. Go on, get to work. Mm, an 11 bits couch in full working order. I don't I didn't need a suit. I wasn't planning on a long session. Uh, but something kept bugging me. Mm, what's wa what's wrong with reality? Mm, I get the impression I'm taking part in events I've experienced before. Haggis is acting like he's seeing me for the first time. Bliss's system has been reset again. I have been to his office before, no doubt about it. Uh, yeah, I definitely do think I'm in a game. Uh, I'm in a sensory world. Is it possible I'm in a sensory world, one that's meant to resemble Realium, something like Brahma or Brahma itself? Is it all a game? Yeah, I definitely lean into the, that direction. And this couldn't really be happening. I must be in some kind of a game. I inhaled deeply, exhaled, repeated the sequence and managed to calm myself down a little. I suddenly felt my coat, couch heating up rapidly. Something's wrong. I died. The pain was suddenly gone. I didn't feel anything. I was numb, blind and deaf. It was just a thought. My digital body sort of disappeared. My body, if I had one, didn't move. I couldn't feel my nose, my chest nor the air that was supposed to fill my lungs. It felt like I was hovering in a silent, spaceless void. I tried to clench my fingers, but there was no reaction. I couldn't feel my hand, as if I didn't have one at all. I couldn't tell where it, what it was. If I tried to, to raise my arm and hit something, I wouldn't register that it had moved or had been blocked. I wondered why I had stopped feeling anything at all, in states of sensory deprivation, my brain was supposed to generate hallucinations. It seems that the most probable explanation was... Mm. Everything pointed to there being no avatar for me in this world. Usually when you enter the game, you chose a skin to put on. If the, if the menu was absent, you used your official skin. It happened automatically, but this world was different. It was private. Was it possible that Haggis overlooked this tiny thing and hadn't activated the avatar choice module for me? I couldn't open any, money, in any menus if I didn't have a body. My abilities were limited to contemplating my own state. Something changed. I was shocked by the beating of my own heart. I heard a rumble of pumping blood and snapping valves. I blinked and my eyelids fluttered like sails. I was somewhere. Definitely wasn't Eleanor's sanctuary. And something started to emerge from what look, looked like a puddle. They, they were hands made of stone, a spherical metal object raised in them. The arms belonged to a woman, her fingers were slender and tipped with long nails, I noticed tiny veins on the back of the hands. There must have been more, I imagined the rest of the statue submerged in the liquid. The sphere looked like some sort of metal device, it wasn't fixed to the stone hands. 
I instinctively tried to open a deck code analy analyzing program, but the list was empty. I didn't have access to them. My touch activated the sphere and it flew up on its own. An emitter switched on and displayed a silhouette resembling Eleanor. Welcome to Access Monday. She sounded like a speaker from an ancient instru instructional video. I'm Eleanor's V-Ghost. I'll help you understand this place and how to find me. How do you know? I'm sorry, I need to finish. You're in Axis Mundi, a place governed by special rules. Your programs won't work here and you can't log out using conventional methods. The sphere in front of you is called a code breaker. I created this program. Uh, it will open the paths of Axis Mundi Labyrinth for you. I need your permission in order to assign the program to you. Just say the word activation. I wanted to use one of my analytic programs, but there was nothing in my deck. Something was blocking it. Mm. Assigning an unknown program to myself didn't seem like a good idea, but I didn't have much of a choice. I really don't think I do. So, sure. Activation. Activation complete. The codebreaker has several operating modes, programs that you should adjust to yourself. It was made that way, so it can only be traced by a human. You unlock each mode by acquiring as an associated aspect. Aspects are one of this Virtualium's mechanism, mechanics. Um, breathe deep, exhale with your mouth. Close your eyes. What makes you calm? Think of it. I tried to find peace among the cacophony of thoughts by taking some deep digital breaths and focusing on my body weight. I felt a hint of blissful relaxation and a fleeting hope of a sense of happiness passed through my mind. It quickly vanished, but it did calm me down. The V-Ghost flickered and vanished. The sphere ascended and stopped above my shoulder. The codebreaker, codebreaker's light turned green and it cast a beam that generated a hollow projection. I see that worked. Welcome back. Her face lit up with a smile. She moved naturally and freely. Her movements weren't mechanical anymore and her eyes looked more, more conscious, more human. I hoped she would answer my questions. Now the codebreaker will follow you wherever you go. You can also engage in slightly limited, limited conversations with me. I've been listening to you carefully, but I have a lot of questions. Yes, uh, just remember that my utterances are limited for now. It has been designed that way on purpose. To get a fuller picture... Uh, you'll get a fuller picture once you unlock the Codebreaker's remaining modes. Does the Codebreaker have a camera? Everything in my deck is dead. If I survive, I would like to share this wild ride on my social media with the required degree of discreet discreetness, obviously. Uh, it has such a function in analysis mode, yes. It also, provided, it also provides you with a detailed, authentic information about observed objects. There's also influence mode, which can open many hidden doors for you. I suggest, suggest you unlock it next. How do I unlock influence mode? Explain it to me. Leave this place and enter the labyrinth. It is a complex structure, but the code breaker will help you navigate it. Once you're in the labyrinth, approach the green monolith and touch it. You'll establish a link. You'll see, you'll see it in the code breaker's light. Do this three times, and the path to your goal, goal will become clear. How do I encode paths in the labyrinth? There are monoliths in the chamber used for programming paths. The code can come in three colors. Each code leads to specific locations. Remember that the color can appear multiple times in the code. It sounds complicated, but it's simpler than it seems. You're a game deck you should manage. Where should I go now? Enter the labyrinth and touch the three monoliths. Follow the green path. It will take you to the mystery tree. 
There you will obtain the yellow aspect and maybe learn about the rules governing the world. I hope it will help you find me. I guess you know everything now. Good luck. If I am to get anywhere in this labyrinth, I will have to encode a path. The code consists of three color sequence. The colors in the code can be repeated. Paths are encoded with the monoliths found, found in the chambers. The code leading to the mystery tree is three times green. Coding paths. A labyrinth is full of interesting places. You can find each place if you know a code to it. A code is a combination of three colors. You can set a color by clicking pylons available on each platform. If you die or load a saved game, you'll begin the game starting on a starting platform, but your progress will be kept. Okay, so that, that just reset it. A code breaker hummed next to my head. I activated interaction mode and summoned the Diginet's Vigos. The mystery tree. I brought you here so that you can unlock a new codebreaker mode. It may, might also help you better understand reality. What do you mean when, it, when you said it could help me understand reality? You might, inter, uh, you might experience cognitive shock. Your convictions about what's real and what's not might drastically change. Look, on the, look at the tree and tell me what you see. It seems to be part of a different system than the one I'm standing on. I call it a mystery tree, though that's just a romanticized name for a data access point. You can connect your code breaker to the point to gain access to the database. All you need is an interface. When you said I need an interface, maybe I could create it. Excellent idea, that's possible. Take a piece out of a tree twig or a leaf will do. It will serve as an aspect stimulus that will unlock influence mode. The mode will allow you to influence the tree and uh, create a physical interface for the code breaker. I looked at the tree and noticed a single fruit among the metallically shimmering leaves. It looked like an apple. Hmm, that's cheeky, seeing how, you know, the original st story of the well, the original, I guess one of the, one of the stories about that involved a certain tree of the uh, tree of knowing, uh, and an apple, uh, was obviously the the, fall, the 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 story about the fall of man. How you know in the Garden of Eden, uh, Eve has has taken the tree the the, the fruit of the tree of knowing, uh, against God's uh, express command. Mm, so, what about the fruit? Is that an apple? I know nothing about mystery tree fruit. Looks like bait, a sweet promise. Could be a trap or some kind of a defense system. Uh, yeah, I'm not going for for that. That seems t too obvious. I plucked a nearest leaf. It rustled and withered and writhed, uh, though it howled like wind through the forest. After a moment, it dissolved in my hand. I felt a tingling sensation in my fingers and my arm stiffened. It wasn't a pleasant feeling. You see, it worked. The code breaker has received the re required aspect stimulus. Interface mode has been unlocked. Switch the code breaker's mode and try try it out. Then we'll discuss how you can find me. That's what you what that's what you're here for. Uh, 
Uh, what do the other modes do? How do I unlock them? A domination mode allows you to make, make use of the Codebreaker's combat cap capabilities. It's activated by a stimulus from a red aspect. Analysis mode allow allows you to get detailed information about elements of the world. It requires a blue aspect. Why don't you try influence mode now? Where should I look for her? That Diginet Eleanor. She really wants to be found, but first you need to master the code breaker. It's important, trust me. Mm, as soon as I formulated the thought, Codebreaker switched to influence mode. The Vigos disappeared and the Codebreaker changed color. The way it moved also changed. I issued a mental command. The orb set a wave that created a hollow, hollow in the tree. I guess it was the Codebreaker's physical interface. It looked like the tree had given me access to its secrets. Uh, what was inside? And what would processing this data entail on the technical level? I focused and the Codebreaker switched to it in its interaction mode, summoning the Diginet's V-Ghost. You called? I intend to retrieve data from this tree. How does that work? Am I going to read it? Will there be video files? Anything I should be aware of? Uh, the transfer will proceed directly to your head. A bit, bit like obi coins, but much faster. It can be dangerous. Besides, the stuff you'll learn will change how you see the world. It may change your life. Be aware of that. Sometimes ignorance is bliss. In Codebreaker established a connection with the tree. I gained access to the information stored within. My head was bombarded with this information. It came relentingly fast like stones being thrown at my brain. Access tree repository, Axis Mundi. No limit value set on the transfer. Data is highly confidential. Methods of scanning psyches, operations on quantum databases, recreating psyches. Uh, data ID, probabilistic system, uh, Promachos, uh, uh, name, at, name Athena. Application simulations, Confidentiality level 7. I fished out a key word. Simulation. What was being simulated? Blue Whales Interactive. Modular management. Blue Whales Interactive. What they were doing. The amount of data was staggering, but if I stopped the transfer, I would never be able to stop it to, to access it again. I decided to keep downloading. It happened in cycles restricted geographical areas, but what made it so important? What did it have to do with... New information was forcing its way into my brain. I needed more data. What were they up to? Were they performing illegal psyche scans and using the Golden Throne helmets for it? Were they using those diginets? I wasn't feeling so good. I was having trouble catching my breath, whatever that meant in this world. I, I, wanted to I wanted the rain of fire. I could take it. So there was a warehouse somewhere full of rendons with psyches that resided in some kind of simulation. I wasn't feeling so good. I just needed a little more. A uniform language was used for the entire simulation. I started seeing black spots. Everything happened faster in the simulation. My entire body became numb. I began to stagger. I felt like my head uh, was about to burst open. I was going to reach for the sky. I had to admit, it, it, it made a kind of sense. Um, I couldn't take it anymore. I overdid it. I knew that my brain received about 80% of the sensory data via the visual cortex. The rest was sent elsewhere. I closed my eyes and covered my ears. That's what that's how I ended some of the simulation. Some of the stimulation. I used the last bit of my strength to let out an inward scream. I'm disconnecting. It worked. My head was spinning like crazy. I wanted to vomit. 
This could have killed me, and not just in this world. I took a closer look at the kaleidoscope. I initially thought its configurations were random, but eventually I picked up on a pattern in which they shimmered. The pattern seemed to be some kind of a visual message. It was I addressed the go the V ghost. It seems that the tree has visual information encoded in its crown. Can you help me decrypt it? I ca I can't, but the code breaker can in, in analysis mode. The mode is currently unavailable. You can unlock it by asp uh, by obtaining the blue aspect. Unfortunately, I don't know where. The tree wasn't actually rustling. It was a quiet sequence of high-pitched tones with a changing frequency, the kind of archaic modems played. The background of the melody was a deep and vibrating mechanical rumble. The deep rhythmic noise resembled the sound of a beating heart. In a strange way, it was quite calming. I picked up on a recurring pattern in a variable high tones. Maybe, maybe it was some sort of a code. I bemoaned not having access to my deck. The tree was emitting some kind of an audiovisual message. The vehicles suggested it was possible to examine it using the code breaker's analysis mode. I'm listening, game deck. You mentioned the code breaker has two more modes. How do I unlock them? Domination mode allows you to use uh, the, the, the program's combat capabilities. It requires a red aspect. Analysis mode requires a blue aspect. As you follow my trail, meaning Eleanor's trail, you should be able to uh, uh, obtain the aspects needed for those mo modules. You said that the normal way of logging out doesn't work here. Then how do I get out of this labyrinth? And how do I find Eleanor? Follow my trail. I also wish to leave Axis Mundi. I believe freedom awaits me outside. To reach the fringe, you must first brave the expanse, a seemingly endless road. Don't worry, I imported a vehicle from another game there. Go to the expanse and look for the next clue. You mentioned that you've gone to the expanse. How do I get there? You can encode the path by touching the monolith in the chambers. You need a specific color sequence for that. Uh, the verse holds the color sequence. Remember, it's sometimes worth listening to your gut so you don't lose the energy wandering around. Uh, if you follow those words, you will reach the expanse. I trust you solve the riddle. That is all for now. Mm, do I have any other... Uh, no, I don't. I guess I can kind of brute force it a little. I mean, for example, this does lead somewhere. The long straight road led past the horizon. I couldn't see where it ended. It vanished into an airy landscape. The road was divided by a wide crevice. I reached the place you mentioned, but I can't go any further. The obstacle could be a problem, I'm surprised. I didn't know about it. Eleanor wanted you to collect an item here that would help you unlock domination mode. Maybe it's somewhere nearby. The vehicle has been imported from a game, I guess from Twisted and Perverted. I reached for the handle but immediately gave up. Uh, the windows, doors, flaps and tires all made up a uniform object with no moving parts. There were a few black paddles. They looked as if they were alive. I reached out my hand. 
The stains behaved like ferrofluid, spiky nodules extended towards my fingers. It was a typical graphic representation of a breached firewall. Naturally, no barrier was here, because it didn't really look like that. Sometimes game engines toggled an option which showed if someone was messing with the safeguards, it showed, as up, uh, it showed, as the, uh, it showed up as these stains. Everything suggested that someone has breached the firewall protecting this car. From what I managed to observe, the codebreaker modified a few parameters of the car's code. I think I deleted the parameter that detected collisions with moving objects. My car could, could now penetrate the car's interior. There was a sheet of real paper. I took it out and uncrumpled it. Paper used to be so pliable. Someone has written something on it. Want to find the gallery, looking for inspiration. Your impatience and optimism will help you find it. I turned the key in the ignition. The combustion engine creaked and let out a few jolts but didn't start. I only managed to turn the headlights. They gave off a faint light. Something flashed at the end of the chasm. A light started blinking on the passenger's side, revealing the glove box. I hadn't noticed it before. What do we have here? Rings, wigs, leather gloves, lipstick, a hand mirror, a pistol, heavy and made of metal, real, whatever that means here. I reached for the pistol. Uh, as soon as I touched its grip, a sharp pain shot through my hand and wrist. Uh, this piece was a trap program. Come on, why would they do something like that? I earned the red aspect, and that's probably all that it was about, but my avatar started falling apart. I summoned the codebreaker with my mind, and something happened as if, I, as if by absorbing the aspect I had earned. Uh, was I becoming delirious? Mm, the unpleasant sensation subsided. I examined the codebreaker. It emitted a red light, acting as if I was it was searching for a target to destroy. You can now code new paths using the three colors. That opens up a lot of new possibilities. Consider that. Analysis mode requires the blue aspect. It would give you a detailed information about this world. Unfortunately, I don't know where it is. The path to the fringe begins with the blue color. Therefore, you need to obtain it for the codebreaker. Unfortunately, I don't know the sequence that will take you there. Eleanor stored it in the memory of the NPCs. You can try locating them, or find a way to, through trial and error. I've reached the expanse, what now? You must cross it and it's a long road. I was planning to use the vehicle imported from another game. How do I unlock the analysis mode? Blue aspect. Don't know where it is. Uh, okay, I'll check the clues, but I'll do it next time, because this episode has been long enough. So that's all for this one, and I will see you in the next one. Bye.